Oh, look! There's the missing link between the human and the monkey. The people who quote-unquote discovered it, brought it up, became famous, and uh, they became great scientists and everything after that. Both of them died, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle also died before they discovered the hoax. So nobody, none of them suffered for it, but we have suffered for it ever since because there were many papers written on the subject, pictures were drawn, a lot of attention was given to it, but when it was turned out to be a hoax, very few papers published it. There were some. I think one was in Cleveland. But you can get this all on the Internet. Everything I'm telling you, pilt down. P-I-L-T-D-O-W-N. Just type it as one word. That's all you need is pilt down. Don't type anything else. Boom. Watch how many of them will come up and you'll find all the stories of the pilt down man hoax. How about Nebraska man? It's a lot closer to home. Anybody heard of that one? That one was uh, in Nebraska, obviously. Not too far from here. So... In this case, that was in about the 20s, and that was uh, like 20-something years before they discovered it was also a hoax. And in this case, they said they found evidence to prove the missing link beyond any shadow of a doubt, and they had people writing stories and doing papers on it, PhDs, everything, everything. I think they said over 50 papers were written on this evidence, this artifact. And in, the, in that particular area, I don't know which city it was, and maybe be... Omaha, but I don't want to say that. You can check it again by going Nebraska Man on the Internet. And you'll find that story. You'll be surprised because they're going to have a picture, a drawing, right, of half man, half human, and half woman, half hum uh, 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 monkey looking gorilla thing. They're like this, and they got, it looks like a little kid, and they got some kind of animal. They're ripping it up, and this big mural, and you're, you're convinced this is the scientific evidence. How many of you know what the evidence actually was? Anybody? One tooth. One tooth. But they were sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that tooth came from what? Because of its design and its structure, it was a human tooth, but much bigger, blah, blah, blah. That was the missing link. And from that they could estimate, listen to what they can tell. The shape of the head, the shape of the body, the color of the skin, and how long the hair is. I don't know. Uh, that's a little much for me. But guess what happened? Somebody from the East Coast come over there, another scientist looking at it some years later, as I said. He said, hold it. That looks like something we got on display. Let's go check it out. Guess what it was? It was a tooth. It was prehistoric from a pig. Oops. And all they did was say, oops, and sweep out that part of the, you know, museum and put something else in its place. Nothing. Nobody wrote any papers about it. Nobody wrote any papers about what kind of liars would put something like that together. Now, you may be wondering, why are you attacking the people with the evolution theory? Well, because, in my estimation, that's the real enemies. To me, the real enemy is the person who will lie even when you show them the truth, and they'll just come up with something else. What's the agenda behind these people? What are they after? What do they want? Well, if they don't believe in God... Logically, they're not going to believe in a life after, are they? So this is their only life, isn't it? And look what our prophet said about these kind of people. He said, Adunya sijno mu'min wa janito kafir. This material world that you see in front of you is a prison to a true believer. But it's the paradise for the disbeliever. Meaning that for you and I who believe in God, we, we know there's some kind of afterlife. This is a prison to us. We can't do the things we want to do. We have to hold ourselves back. You can't eat everything you want to eat because some things are wrong and you know better. You don't drink anything you want to drink. Some things are wrong. And that's the same way in a prison, isn't it? You don't give them a bill of fare and say, I'd like to have some uh, filet mignon in the morning and uh, perhaps in the afternoon some ice cream and <laughs> in a prison. <laughs> Clothing, same thing. You don't get to just go out and do what you want to do. You, there's restrictions. Believers don't do that. They're modest. And especially if you think about it, a lot of people don't, don't put this in their mind because they're being brainwashed to a lot of propaganda. But really good Christians are always conscious of how they look in public. Not that they're trying to show off, but they're trying to be sure that they're modest and they're not showing off, so to speak, especially their bodies. They don't go out here half-naked. 
Unless what? Unless somebody brainwashes him and tells him, oh, you need to do that to be modern. Being naked is not modern, by the way. That comes from the first person that was ever born. That's not modern. That's always been available. But people working on you to try to convince you to do something that's really against your nature. We're going to move forward. I'm not going to hang up on any of the small ones because we'll do a Q&A thing after this is over if you want to and talk about the individual subjects. But what I wanted to follow through with this concept of not believing in God at all and promoting this idea of evolution. Why? Well, if you know the time period when this came about, when it was so important to prove that that man came out of an ape originally, it's because if you buy that theory, immediately what's the next thing you will do? You'll look around and see who looks most like monkeys, right? And who is furthest away from looking like a monkey? Because you say, I have progressed more than you. Hmm? To the extent that some of the people, even though they're disbelievers, now, now this is what I really don't like about disbelievers, they'll go to the Bible and quote things out of the Bible. Now first of all, you don't believe in the Bible, why are you going to come and throw that in my face? Why do you want to take something here and give a meaning to it and you don't even believe in it? And they will do that. And they gave meanings to things which were never intended to imply for instance, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, if you're familiar with the Bible in that area, it talks about the sons of God. You need to really go back and look at the Hebrew to find out what that really was. Because obviously, how could God have a bunch of sons? Way back in Genesis. But so it says, sons of God saw daughters of men. And right away they twisted that and they said, see, these sons of God, actually, these are the Anglos, okay? Huh? And the... Uh, Daughters of men, you see, those, those are the, you know, Africans and those kind of, I'm serious, it's what they used to teach. If you teach this kind of a theory, then it becomes okay to oppress those people. Why? They're just a monkey anyway, don't hurt. And it worked real good for people who were making a lot of money oppressing, oppressing entire nations and getting their nation to go along with it. We did it here, I'm talking about when we came to America as British, when we came here, we did it to the native Indians. We made them out to be what? Savages. Remember the word? Savages. They were savages. They were animals. How many of you heard that kind of a thought? Yeah, since we went to school. But how many of you know the real truth? And I just came from Jamestown, Virginia. I live in Virginia now. Jamestown, Virginia has got it right there. It's, it's on a big, huge board. You can look at it from your car. You don't even have to get out and look. And it tells you that the first people that came to settle that settlement all died. They couldn't survive the winter. It was too hard on them. The next people that came in 1572 would have also died. Except for what? Except that the Indians took care of them and nourished them, helped them, and the drawings that those people made Copies of those drawings are right there. They drew pictures of what it looked like in what's now Jamestown. There was a two-story building, hello, that these Indians had. I didn't know savages built buildings, did you? And the savages, quote-unquote, taught them how you plant the plantations because they already had them. Oops. What happened to these wandering tribes of knuckle-draggers? Whoops. So there was a society here. There were buildings here. But they weren't like in the it's Central and Mexico, South America and Mexico. I've been there as well. And those structures are so big, nobody can tear those down and ignore them. But if you stop and think, those are, those are pyramids that are there, for crying out loud, before we ever got here. But we had to make these people look second class so it was okay to kill them and steal their land, which is what really happened. That's the truth. And now, if you think, okay, now you got whacked in the head, you went too far into Arabia or someplace. Tell you where I got that. From our own history professors here in America in a book called The Lies My Teacher Told Me. Get the book and see what it says. These are history professors who know that they've been arguing with these book companies to give us, let us teach what we know, but they will not change the curriculum. Now they've made some changes in the last couple of years, but when he wrote the book, Lies My Teacher Told Me, none of these things were known. 
Now I'm going to add one final thing for you, and this has nothing to do with Islam or comparing anything, just for fun because the book was so interesting, I couldn't resist every single chapter. It had one about Helen Keller. Everybody know Helen Keller? Yes. Famous for what? For what? Huh? Helen Keller. She couldn't see and she couldn't hear because she had a disease when she was a small baby. And she had a lot of anger and then she grew up and as she was growing up a teacher had a lot of concern for her and helped her to communicate by touching on the palm of the teacher. So much so that she could actually write books and everything. It's an amazing lady, yes? She used to be on the front page every week of, of like New York Times and Washington Papers and every, everybody was talking about her because she fit what they needed. But when she started talking about women's rights at a time when that wasn't popular, she became history. And when she started talking about the coal mines and she said, you know, I, she had said anybody can overcome their handicaps. That's what they were using her for. But she said when she got and saw the condition of the people living in those uh, work camps, she said, these people can't get above where they are. I never knew about such a thing existed because they're being economically oppressed and they're slaves to this thing. Well, of course, the people that own that don't like to hear that. So guess what they said? What do you want from a deaf and dumb lady anyway? Look at this. I never hear from her again. Go read the rest of it. There's a surprise in there for you. You've got to read it. I'm not going to tell you. Go get the book. Lies my teacher told me. I don't get a commission, by the way. So, why would these people go to this kind of extent? Because, as I said, those who really don't believe, they want this earth. This is what they want. And they'll do anything to get it. So they will perpetuate whatever it takes to make it happen. For those who believe, they have certain things and morals that they're, they won't compromise. But if you put enough on them, they will. How many ever heard of something called Remember the Main? Anybody? That was a famous ship that sank, and they said that our enemies did this, and we have to go attack them. But you can put that on the Internet, too, and find out that the ship actually sank because it was just old. It wasn't sunk by anybody. How about World War I, Pearl Harbor? Documents in Washington, D.C., that... Seven days prior to the attack was right there. They had the information. They knew what the Japanese were doing. And instead of getting ready for it, they didn't notify. They didn't warn them. They sent more ships into Pearl Harbor. Why? Because we'd already fought the war to end all wars. And the Americans were not getting into another. We were, we were sick of it. We didn't want to lose any more people. We didn't want to do that anymore. But then when you have this kind of terrorism going on, ho oh, ho, let's go get those slanty-eyes Japs, man. We're after them. And then we took all the ones, anybody oriental in this country, we locked them up. And I met one of those ladies when she was 14 years old in California going to school. They grabbed her and her family and locked them up and stayed locked up until after the war. And she said, uh, she said I had a lot of hatred in, in me because I didn't know what's going on. Why my own country is locking me up? I don't understand what's going on. And so when we hear people making the same kind of mistakes again, we have to ask ourselves, are, are we buying the same thing again? Is this the same deal or something like it? And uh, I think that is enough parallel there. You can get where I'm going with that. I'm going to back down to another level, and that's to go back to Islam itself. Islam, as we understand it as Muslims today, is based on the noun, okay? The noun is based on two things, and that's the Holy Quran and the teachings of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. The Qur'an is a book, but it's with Allah. And you might say, what does that mean? It means to us that the Qur'an itself is only Qur'an when it's being Qur'aned. And you say, what are you talking about? Remember I told you Arabic is not the same as English. Qur'an does not really mean a book. It means a recitation. What you heard me do a little earlier... I can give you a little sample a little bit more and you can hear it. That's Quran. It's 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم